everybody. It's naturalist Pam Lesovich here at the Dodge Nature Center in West St. Paul. And as you can see from looking around behind me, winter has certainly arrived here in Minnesota. And while it brings amazing beauty, it also can present some really difficult challenges to the wildlife that lives here in our state. But nature has found a way and it's given these animals some wonderful, unique adaptations that they can use for, to modify their behavior or even their bodies. Even you ad adapt to the winter. Think about this. You're probably not drinking hot chocolate in the summer, but we enjoy it now. We probably are eating more soups and stews. Maybe you've added an extra blanket to your bed or you're wearing a big puffy coat to stay warm. Maybe you've even put on a little bit of extra weight, you're sleeping a little bit more, or you're one of the lucky ones who's managed to get away from it all and go on a nice warm vacation. Well, today we'd like to share with you some of these amazing things that animals can do in order to survive the cold here in the North. So come on along with me and my friends and we'll share some of these unique adaptations. Hello, Mick Garrett, naturalist from Dodge Nature Center. Today, I get to talk with you about my favorite winter mammal. Lots of mammals, come wintertime, grow thick fur, keeps them nice and warm. But one group of mammals, the weasels, take it even further. The least weasel, the short-tailed weasel, the long-tailed weasel, they all grow a thicker winter coat, but the coat changes color. In the summertime, the weasels are brown. Perfect camouflage for living in the woods. But in the wintertime, when they grow their thick new winter fur, it's white. That white color allows them to be camouflaged. Because you see, weasels are ferocious predators. They need to eat between 40 and 60% of their body weight every single day. Being camouflaged is gonna help them catch the food that they need. But they have a problem. Even though they're, even though they're a ferocious predator, they are small. Larger predators are also gonna go after them. Hawks, owls, coyotes, they're being hunted while they are hunting. So the weasels have an extra special trick. Both in the summertime and in the winter, the weasels have a black tip on their tail. They've done studies and what they found is that black tip acts as a distraction. The predator is attracted to that because it stands out. And so when they go to grab the weasel, they grab the tail and the weasel escapes. This amazing little predator that changes color to help it hunt also has a distraction to keep it from being hunted. An amazing Minnesota mammal that's surviving out in the winter. Hello, my name is Ashley. I'm a naturalist fellow here at Dodge Nature Center, and with me is one of our painted turtles. Painted turtles are really common here in Minnesota. You've probably seen them out basking in the sun during warm weather. But what are they doing right now when it's so cold outside? So painted turtles go into a state called rumation. Rumation is really similar to hibernation, but that's a word we use for cold-blooded animals like reptiles and amphibians. So what they'll do is they'll find a place in a body of water that doesn't freeze completely and they'll sit at the bottom. They'll get very cold. Their body is going to be the same temperature as their surroundings, so their metabolism will slow, their heart rate will slow, and they won't eat all winter. And they'll sit at the bottom doing almost nothing. If you found them, you'd almost think they were dead. And while they're down there, the only way they can get oxygen is by opening their mouth and letting the water flow over the surface of their mouth, absorbing oxygen from the water that way. But you know what's cool? 
they can do that with their butt as well. So if you've ever heard someone say that turtles can breathe out of their butt, that's true. Pretty cool. Hi, my name is Julia and I'm a naturalist fellow here at Dodge Nature Center. Do you know what frogs do during the winter time? Well, here in Minnesota, most of our amphibian friends like frogs, toads, and salamanders will go into a dormant state. But one frog species in particular, the wood frog, has a really special strategy for conquering the challenges of the chill. Now frogs are cold-blooded animals, which means their internal temperature will match the surrounding air temperature. And that could be fatal during the winter time. So most frogs in Minnesota will go deep under ponds, lakes, and streams so that they become cold, but their bodies never freeze during that time. But the wood frog does something really special. What they will do is burrow into the leaf litter in the forest and they can actually survive throughout the winter with two thirds of their body almost completely frozen. They essentially become frogsicles to survive. Now to do this, the wood frog will produce its own antifreeze called glucose. And this syrupy sugar solution is produced by the liver and pumped all throughout the frog's body and into its cells. It'll bind to the water molecules inside the cells to prevent any dangerous ice crystal formation and will also prevent dehydration throughout the winter time. Now, during this stage of dormancy, the wood frog is going to appear dead. There's no movement, no breathing, no heartbeat, no brain activity. They don't even need to eat or go to the bathroom. That's so crazy. But during the springtime, when the temperatures warm up, they'll actually start to thaw within an hour. First, their heart will start beating, then their brain will activate, and then their legs start moving again. And within the hour, they'll hop off to find a body of water to start breathing. Now, scientists don't even know yet how they get their heart started in the springtime. Amazing. the black-capped chickadee. What may seem like just an ordinary backyard bird is anything but ordinary when it comes to winter survival. These tiny animals only weigh about as much as two quarters, and yet somehow they're able to survive in Minnesota even through temperatures well below zero. How do they do it? Well, for one thing, they have half an inch of fluffy feathers covering their entire bodies. This acts like a puffy parka all winter long. The other thing they do is they eat a lot. During the day, chickadees are feeding nonstop. While in the summer, they might eat lots and lots of insects, in the winter, their diet changes to mostly things like seeds and berries. But what really makes them winter survival champs is their ability to go into torpor. At night, they'll allow their body temperature to drop by as much as 10 to 12 degrees. This lowers their metabolism and saves them lots of energy, which means that this little guy will survive to live another winter day. Another way that animals deal with wintertime is to migrate. And we usually think of birds as being the migrators, and that's true. A lot of them do long trips. They travel from the far northern reaches down into Central America, South America. But there are some birds that only come as far as here to Minnesota. And let's meet one of those. All right, you see that dark colored bird right there? That's a dark eyed junco. Dark eyed juncos spend the summer in Canada where they raise their families. And then in the fall, they head south but they only come as far as Minnesota. That's where they're gonna spend the winter. A lot of people, when they see the juncos return, they figure that means winter on its way. So sometimes these birds are nicknamed snowbirds. They like to eat on the ground. So this may be the first spot where you see them. Look around on the ground underneath bird feeders or near bushes, but they'll fly up into your feeders. I've even seen them at my suet feeders. Did you notice when the junco moves around, you can see little flashes of white back by the tail? That's a great way to recognize this bird when you see it. So keep your eyes open for juncos, a migrator that comes to Minnesota to spend its winter. Hello, this is Jeff, a naturalist at Dodge Nature Center with one of the animals we take care of here, a garter snake. 
Uh, it's the most common snake in Minnesota. You can find it in every county in Minnesota. And like all reptiles, uh, it is cold-blooded or ectothermic, meaning it is the same temperature as its surroundings. Uh, so that means for winter in Minnesota, they need to do something special in order to survive since we get well below freezing temperatures in the winter time. So what garter snakes and other snakes need to do is go below the ground, get below the frost line. So what garter snakes do is find a rock crevice or a tunnel or a burrow that a, uh, another animal has made because garter snakes can't make their own tunnels and get below the frost line. And while they don't necessarily socialize with other snakes during the warm months, in the winter time, they will congregate in these hibernaculums or uh, um, below surface areas in the hundreds and even thousands. Uh, so you can even uh, see some videos online of garter snakes in Canada um, where they have these huge den sites of hundreds and hundreds of snakes. Uh, so this is the red-sided garter snake, um, and you can identify it by the three yellow stripes down its back. And they're important to our ecosystem because they eat uh, mice and insects and uh, tadpoles and frogs. So they're an important predator. And lots of other things eat them as well, like hawks and raccoons. So. One of the amazing animals we have here at the Nature Center, the garter snake. Thank you for your support of Dodge. Hi everyone, it's Pam here at Dodge Nature Center again. And I have the privilege of actually being able to talk about the poster animal for hibernation, the woodchuck, also known as the groundhog, who has a special day and hopefully brings spring soon. And for old schoolers, he's also known as the whistle pig. Now groundhogs are true hibernators, unlike raccoons and squirrels that will sleep for a few days when it's very cold. The groundhog actually goes through a physical change. Their body temperature will drop from around 100 degrees to almost frozen. Their heart rate will slow from 80 beats per minute to around four beats per minute. Their breathing will slow to twice a minute and they won't eat, they won't go to the bathroom, and they rarely move. Now, some people think they're sleeping, and actually, when hibernating, groundhogs are closer to being dead than they are to being asleep. They actually need to come out of hibernation a few times during the winter to sleep. So their bodies will actually come out for short periods of time in order to get some rest. Now, when the groundhog actually appears, hopefully a little in the beginning of February, we know spring is on the way because what this signifies is the groundhog's food source will hopefully be coming shortly. Groundhogs love to eat green things as many of you who have a garden probably already know. Now when they come out, they kind of look like a bag of bones with a fur coat on, but hopefully after a few weeks of getting into your garden or the bushes and the trees in the woods, the groundhog will live again. So the next time you see a groundhog, give him a shout out. Hello everyone, my name is Julia and today I'm going to talk with you all about black bears. Now you might be thinking, why black bears? Well, despite being the smallest bear in North America, they are the most common and they're the only bear native to Minnesota, which makes them pretty important for us. Now, a lot of us know that black bears will hibernate in the wintertime, but what exactly does hibernation mean? Well, for black bears, it means that from late summer to early fall, they are eating and eating and eating and eating and eating and eating some more so that they can put on enough weight to help them survive the winters. They'll eat up to 20,000 calories a day which is 10 times the amount that we eat in a normal day. And they'll put on between four to five extra inches of body fat. It's a lot of weight. But as the weather shifts and things get colder, black bears will go in search of a den where they can nestle up for the cold winters. They'll range their dens from year to year. 
But once they're tucked in and they go into hibernation, their heart rate slows, their breathing slows, and their body temperature decreases so that they don't eat, they don't drink, they don't peep, they don't poo during the whole time that they're hibernating, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. Instead, their body will use the energy from all that fat they stored up when it was warmer and recycle the waste that they produce so that they get all the nutrients they need. Now, after that five to seven months of hibernation is over and black bears come out in the springtime, they've only lost between 20 to 30% of their body weight, which is pretty crazy because if we think about it, if humans were to do the same thing, we would lose 90% of our body weight during that time. And we would not be doing so well. Now, Female black bears do a little bit more than male black bears during hibernation because female black bears will actually give birth to their young. And they won't wake up from their hibernation when they're giving birth. Instead, their cubs, who are blind, deaf, and weigh less than a pound, will know instinctively to snuggle up in their mother's warm, cozy fur and find her milk so that they can feed themselves, which is really amazing. So the next time you're looking for some fun facts to share with your family and friends, let them know just how awesome black bears are. So hopefully you've enjoyed learning a little bit about how animals adapt to this frigid cold north winters. Um, whether it's having a sleepover with hundreds of your friends, breathing out of your butt, turning into a popsicle, putting on a few pounds, or getting out of town, animals have found a way. Hope you can find a way and put on that extra clothing, grab a hot beverage, and get out and enjoy the beautiful winter wonderland that's happening here in Minnesota. And remember, spring is just around the corner.